Guess what I had today? What? Two Krispy Kreme donuts this morning and then chicken nuggets for lunch. <laughs> At least you had some rib meat, man. Brunch! Hit it, boys! <laughs> We've got a, a breaking update on a long-running brunch story that has never actually been discussed on brunch and should have been. I never knew about it until like two hours ago. Did you know that John Hamm was supposed to play Nick Dunn in Gone Girl? Uh, I feel like I I heard that in passing, hmm. but it would make sense. Uh, Just like out of a nightclub fit. and like you overheard a group discussing something. You're Correct. like, hold on a second. I hate to eavesdrop. You said John Hamm was, and it was like a Mad Men contractual scheduling thing. I can't tell if I've actually heard that in the past, or if what, or if it just like really makes sense in my brain. <laughs> I so when I saw it, I, so John Hamm last week on Watch What Happens Live, which is another thing that should be in brunch lore, but really isn't. I don't watch any of, uh, I don't watch any Bravo, which mm. I should because every time someone discusses a Bravo thing. It sounds like either something I would like or something that we would talk about. Yeah, I mean, I think I definitely think that we would talk about it, and we we would. I think that a lot of our listeners would like if we talked about it. So um, that's why we don't do it. Yes, exactly. No, uh, my experience with Bravo has always been like this shit is so dumb. I don't like. Why does anybody care about this? And then it'll be on in the background, and it'll be like, hmm, what's going on here? That's what I did with. Uh, at, was it uh, Alabama or Florabama? Florabama Shore. Sure. So I did uh, I did Lags Beach like everybody else. I did yeah, the course. Hills. I did Jersey Shore. And I somebody had Florabama Shore on the background. I was like, now this, come on. This is st- too stupid. And I was like, but be quiet. Let me <laughs> yeah, see this. Right. I said this about something recently where the first time I heard TikTok by Kesha, I thought that that was the stupidest uh, American culture was ever going to get, and it is insane how that is like that a is like polished, now. <laughs> clean ass, bougie ass single compared to uh, everything else that we do. But Bravo uh, is essentially like earworm. It's it's like TV earworm. Mm, I don't hate it. Wait, I mean that, that's what I think. Uh, like TikTok, the app and Instagram and a lot of stuff we consume is. We're like, oh no no no, we know it's really stupid. And don't worry, we definitely don't have an unhealthy addiction to it. Yeah. It's like a stupid thing that we know it's stupid, so just check it out. Well, well I posted, I, I, I proposed this idea, I think, like two summers ago, where I was like, we should do a wash thing, and we should maybe like make it Patreon or something, where we watch trash TV, and all of us do like a panel on the trash TV. Like the Bravo stuff would fall into that. The uh, I feel like we're like too late on the Bravo train now because like the Tom Sand of all thing was like the number one pop culture item for I the past li- two years. Swear to God, I don't. Year. I've never. Heard, I don't think I've heard that name before. Tom Sandoval. What is Tom Sandoval? It's Tom Sandoval and Raquel from. Vanderpump I've heard the name Rules. Raquel, but but that's because that's a, a, a bunch name. of bunch of Vanderpump Rules drama. Oh, I can't even like begin to to summarize it because it is such a mess that like <sighs> you need to be in there. But like everybody was talking about, it. even my guy friends who like I know don't watch that shit got into it because they were like, "This is spicy." And like I go to parties now, and my guy friends are like talking about it, and they're like, "You guys, you guys are talking about Tom Sandoval and Raquel over there?" I need to jump in on this conversation because I've been watching it. So I famously have a very busy week, so I don't know if I have time to do this. But just off of the last thirty seconds of you speaking, I feel like we could really get our numbers up to be like. Uh, this week we get into all the Vander House drama and you are like, I can't even begin to describe it because it's so crazy. Well, and then just like a bunch of clips of just you saying general things like that and just be like, we break it down. And a lot of just like me being, what's would, that? Would play into the joke too that now it's like two months removed from the reunion or whatever it was that like they've wrapped that up. Mm. So that's a uh, uh, shout out uh, time crisis. They always are two months late on everything, even the stuff that is up their alley. Like so, like this movie came out, Flaming Hot, which is like they made a movie. It would be like if somebody made a movie about Dick Richards, 
Okay. And like, like this movie was made for us to discuss. And they were like, they said, they're like, we're going to wait till the movie's been out for two months. I and, love that. Uh, I mean, I love like giving yourself that, that space, whether you yeah. want it or not. They, but they all talk about like the Grammys or like the Super Bowl, like two months later after it Incredible. happens. Just, and I don't even think they totally do it purposely. I think they're just like, we're kind of old people. This is the speed at which we operate. But, uh, John Hamm said on watch what happens live that he was, uh, a finalist was was who they had in mind, who they wanted for Nick Dunn in Gone Girl, but because of scheduling stuff with Mad Men, Mad Men, it seems didn't just like didn't want him to do the movie uh, for one reason or Probably another. Just wanted him to be seen as Don Draper. Yeah, I mean, if you so you're not an Entourage guy, but that pops up in Entourage where they're scheduling stuff and they're like, okay, we're able to make the scheduling thing work, and then they're like. Look, we didn't want it to come to this, but uh, you're never doing that other movie. We don't want. He's he's trying to play Pablo Escobar. Oh right, yeah, and yeah. he's a uh, he's Aquaman, mm-hmm. and they're like, we look, can't have man. Pablo Escobar playing Aquaman or Aquaman playing Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're <laughs> like, look, man, you're gonna be way too cool once you're Pablo <laughs> Escobar. We don't want you to come back and play Aquaman <laughs> after that. Uh, no, they're. Uh, I believe the line is like, we can't have the face of our franchise sniffing cocaine. On a big ass screen, James Cameron would say that because James Cameron directed Aquaman. Here's the thing, though: James Cameron's not even there for Aquaman two, and they're and they're they're hiding this from Vince. And then he's like, wait, "Sounds like a thing that James Cameron would do too." There's what a, a thing, fucking prick. There's a thing where he's like, "Wait, they, I can't believe they're doing this." There's no way, like, Cameron really is saying this, but and then like everyone gets quiet and they're like, "Is Cameron even doing Aquaman 2? And this is how they get you. They lock you into these long deals, and uh, he he ends up getting fired off of Aquaman. Who it's, does? Uh, Vince. Okay. It's a whole bad thing. I forget who they end up getting. I want to say they get Jake Gyllenhaal. That's an upgrade. And then they see the studio guy later, and he's like, hey, you know, my only regret with all this Aquaman stuff was that we didn't get Jake Gyllenhaal for the first one. Yeah. How mean, it. how mean is that? <laughs> how, how predictable is fucking Entourage that I guess that? And that is <laughs> discussing Entourage two months and 11 years after yeah, it comes it. out. Did you hear that, uh, speaking of, of delayed things, Aqu- or, uh, Avatar, the mm. third one, is delayed. What are we going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. How are we going to survive? I, I think, I guess, just put on... Aquaman to or uh, Avatar two now, and by the time it's done, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Avatar three. That's so true. John Hamm goes on. Watch what happens live. You're going to be telling this story to the d- entire podcast. Whenever we get into things like that, where like one thing <laughs> takes a bunch of segues, I've thought this way many times over the history of brunch. I've gotten that like shit. I've got a no hitter going thing of like, <laughs> yeah. wait, like could we? Do, do one I want to finish this story? <laughs> over, could we do one story and over the course of one episode and not get – because that's the – now like I'm in my head. Like how far do we get outside of it? Mm-hmm. And like if you uh, take it somewhere else, I'm like, do I push him further? <laughs> Let this go further. But the thing is we'll forget. Mm-hmm. We'll definitely forget to do it. But let's see where it goes. Uh, John Hamm. Of kissing Jessica Stein fame is dishing with Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen. Nailed it. On Watch What Happens Live. Famously, I don't watch Bravo. (laughs) And they are just talking about everything under the sun. I only saw this on like a BuzzFeed thing, so I actually don't know what they were talking about. But he did confirm he was supposed to be in it, but Mad Men stuff, blah, blah. And he did note, he was like, if you think about it, I'm from St. Louis. This all goes down in St. Louis. There was a big hoopla with Ben Would have Affleck the whole over what hat he yeah. wears. He could just, yeah, he could just production been. wouldn't have shut down for three days. But let me think: Do they move there because they move there because of his family, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, and she just goes I along it was with in it. Connecticut, maybe it just had Connecticut vibes. I mean, I think they start in Connecticut, but they they do move to St. Louis. Okay, okay. They, I think they start in St. in uh, the Big Apple. Okay. And then, oh right, yeah, they they have a, an apartment in the city, but then they wanted to move like to a some, suburb. I think he gets laid off and wants to open. Or no, he's going to start teaching at a college, and he's also let's make it tain spoilers going to start having sex with a student played by Emily, Emily Ratajkowski, Ratajkowski, 
who uh, famously, I don't know why I came up uh, across this recently, but uh, some stuff on that uh, Blurred Lines toll set thing. Yeah, she no was, good. Yeah, like, she was the one who like raised a big stink about like how like the behavior of, of yeah. Robin Thicke and stuff, and she doesn't like being associated with that anymore. Well, I definitely understand her not liking being associated with that because she's done more than just one music video <laughs> for sure. Uh, and obviously that, and it's a problematic music. It's a song, <laughs> uh, music song. You know what it was? Uh, truly, we were on the boat. I've been sailing. Yeah, uh, we were on the boat and. Somehow the song Brand New Jones came up by Robin Thicke. 88% chance I brought up the song Brand New Jones by Robin Thicke, who was a great song off of, I think, his first album. I think his first album just had that one and When I Get You Alone, uh, or whatever. It was one before Blurred Lines. And there was a brief discussion about like how did Robin Thicke end up getting into, for lack of a better term, like sexual assault pop. And that that song came out. And I do remember right when it came out, everyone was like, this song rocks. Pharrell has done it again. And like two weeks later, people were like, lyrics aren't so great. Listen to the rest of the lyrics. Not a good message. But it was just the cat was out of the bag. That thing took over society. And obviously it had a music video with uh, naked, beautiful women. So... You weren't going to stop that train from rolling away. You allowed it to leave the station. Right, right. Like, it was on all of us that it got out. And now, does Robin Thicke even put out songs anymore? Or is he just a... I know he's on The Voice, right? I think so. Yeah, I, I have no idea whether he puts out music. I do know, though, I watched an interview with Emily Ratajkowski where she says that uh, before she said anything about the behavior on that set, he blocked her on Instagram. And she was like, what's the story there? And then I think she was like, what, are you afraid I'm going to tell people that you were acting like a fucking animal on that? Uh, I actually think one of the lyrics, isn't it like, I'm not an animal? No, you're a, but you're an animal. Baby, it's in your nature. Meow. <laughs> That's, is that direct lyrics? I think so. Uh, okay, Meow. now he would close. Try to domesticate you. Oh, yeah. But you're an animal, baby. It's in your nature. And then I think uh, Pharrell must do okay. like the. That's like a little Pharrell flourish. Meow. Meow. <laughs> uh, T.I. also performs on that song. Correct. So T.I. was on Watch What Happens Live discussing his work <laughs> in the film uh, ATL, <laughs> where he plays the son of uh, Common, and they are like. Pfft, six years apart are really yeah. are we discussing different movies uh oh uh i'm thinking of american gangster oh with, i don't know uh, if i Denzel saw that. washington oh ti plays uh common son in that movie and he plays mm. a baseball player and he's gonna be like a promising baseball player yeah and it's like ti is clearly like 30 years old and common looks younger it's a real amy poehler rachel mcadams situation true 29 when she was in Mean Girls as Regina George. And Amy <laughs> Poehler, I'm pretty sure, was like 33 <laughs> yeah, playing her mom. That's awesome. But she wasn't a regular mom. She's a cool mom. She was a young mom. She had him at four. She, she was a young <laughs> yeah. mom who had him at four. You know who doesn't get enough credit in Mean Girls? We don't have as much material for this episode, so we're really just like having a, a friend catch up, if you can't tell. Uh, the Regina George's younger sister, who is constantly oh, like doing the, the one the, to three feet in front of the TV. The, the VH1 just music do, videos, the, yeah. dance, the dance instructional things. Love it. Hilarious. I don't even think she's doing, I think she's just like watching music videos and like miming the stuff back. Okay, that could be it. Like, I don't think she's watching one of those tapes that says, here's how you do the moves. Oh, who was that guy uh, who used to, like, I know. the choreographer to the stars or whatever? Yes. Brian We've definitely something. talked about Darren something? Darren? Uh, I We've I definitely re- talked about I remember him. seeing those commercials all the goddamn time. Darren's Dance Grooves. Darren's Dance Grooves. Darren right, Henson. Baby. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, Darren Do It Henson. Born May 5th, 1973, had a birthday this year. <laughs> is an American choreographer, dancer, actor, director, and producer. Henson was a brief member of the Freestyle Trilogy. Blah, 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 blah. But let's see, which ones did he uh, choreograph? Britney Spears. I definitely knew he did. I want to say he did uh, Sometimes, maybe? Let's see. I know he's done Britney Spears. Uh, maybe some NSYNC? Darren Henson 
music <laughs> videos. Here's a question for you while you look that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, like, what, what Ben Affleck roles or what John Hamm roles could the other not play? Because they have similar vibes. Okay, I am adamant about this one. I know one. The town, because then there would have been two characters played by John Hamm, and that would have been confusing. <laughs> that would have been very confusing. I forgot that it they would have been like a together. TikTok when they're talking to each other. <laughs> True, but what, but the other one could have played the other role. Uh, could could ben, have just swapped roles. I think that if Ben Affleck were in kissing Jessica Stein, they'd be like, "Yo, Jessica." Get with this guy. He's like a young Ben Affleck. Because Ben Affleck famously uh, looked very handsome when he was young. John Hamm looked goofy when he was young. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, uh, I guess I'm thinking of like new age, like in the new era of Affleck and, and Hamm. Uh, I could definitely not see Ben Affleck playing Confess Fletch. Yeah, I think it would have been a little Gigli. I just don't think that he has like the goofy, humor chops. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that he can do the super goofy thing. Um I think that Ben Affleck could, he could, I mean, he could have been in uh, Tag. Yeah. That's like an an ensemble. I think Ben Affleck would be like, please, I don't do dumb movies. (laughs) (laughs) They'd be like, "Uh, mm, let's pull up your IMDb, sir. (laughs) Excuse me, sir. Uh, So uh, I actually do want to stay on this thread for a second, which John Hamm rolls. I think that. It would have been insane if Ben Affleck played Don Draper, but I think he could have done it. I think he could have done it. I think he would have gotten tired of it. Yeah. I think that Ben Affleck would have like done like two seasons of Mad Men and been like, I'm out. I don't do TV. Uh, John Hamm would have been a better Batman. Yeah, John Hamm definitely could be Batman. I'll tell you what, by the way, I was discussing this with a friend the other day. Uh, Batman versus Superman was on television the other day. And... I kind of kept it on. It's not bad. It's, it's really not bad. Right. How did we like, I think that I had my typical reaction to a superhero movie, which was like, it's not, it wasn't really made for me, but I didn't dislike it. But people said that was terrible, right? Um, I don't know if people said it was terrible, but I think it came out at the wrong time where like Marvel was really starting to gain some momentum and like put together good movies. And then people were like kind of comparing the two and they were like, DC compared to Marvel DC, is right? absolutely trash. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cavill, yes. good. Yeah. Affleck, I thought was good. Amy Adams, mm-hmm. a terrific Lois Lane. I know that the one thing that people really hated about that movie was Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, mm-hmm. but that was the movie, right? That I was like, that's my kind of villain. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I I think that that. It wasn't who they wanted Lex Luthor, Luthor to be, like the comic book fans. It was who you wanted him to be, mm, but flamboyant. not, yeah, but not like. The, Is Lex Luthor not typically I flamboyant? I don't think so. He's no. a little more like he's tough and like rugged and not and what this cunning. guy was. This guy was putting uh, famously uh, jars of piss in uh, courtrooms and then blowing them up. Yeah. And Holly Hunter sees the jar of piss. She's like, uh, he was talking about piss earlier it must, and then the whole place blows up but yeah but i mean what a cast yeah i mean it's not a bad movie it's just like dc has some of the best comic book characters and some of the worst movies and like the best that you can expect from their movies is like okay interesting so he would have played nick dunn and they end up moving on david fincher does famously to ben affleck mm-hmm. uh do you know why david fincher said he cast Ben Affleck and what I guess just uh, how he knew that Ben Affleck was right for Nick Dunn. This is fascinating Uh, because he could have seen him killing Jennifer Garner. Dark. No. (laughs) Okay. Paul. Yeah. He did. That's, that's not the reason he said. Okay. Well, I mean like they did have like a a lot of Ben Affleck had a lot of like marital and relationship issues. Well, yeah, I think that he just, was a little more outspoken than I think. I think that he uh, has helped uh, normalize uh, uh, relationships being work. Yeah, for famously sure. during a speech where you're only given a certain amount of time <laughs> to talk about your loved ones, and he used it that way. Mm-hmm. He was being real, though. I still I don't begrudge him for that speech as much as other people do. I brought that up to my therapist one time. I don't know. So every now and then, Affleck will come up, and I'll be maybe like, he hey. should have brought that up to his therapist instead. <laughs> before, of, yeah. like maybe do a little test run before you <laughs> yeah. go. 
I think that some people would say that, but I like that he was, and obviously that uh, marriage famously uh, ended, but I liked that he was like, hey, these things are work. Like, for, there's better ways he could have phrased it, but he got to the point. I don't know. I hope that uh, they both loved their marriage and uh, everything that they yeah. were able to get out of it. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that they both loved their marriage. Why? You? I think that you can. I, th- I think that you can look back on a an ended relationship and say it was a good thing. Yeah, but I I, th- I also don't think that you can look back on it and be like I loved that when it ended. <laughs> like, oh, disagree. Ah, disagree. No marriage. Yeah, and I mean, like, I've never been married, with, so I don't with, know. Like, how much baggage there comes with like that whole. I'm thing. I'm sure you could be like, that was exhausting, but I'm sure there are divorced couples who are like, yo, that was a good ass time being married to that person. It didn't work. Yeah, but right, yeah, for sure. But like, loved it. Eh, if you loved it so much, <laughs> we're gonna get Ben Affleck on the pod and be like, settle a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you love your marriage? <laughs> um. So uh, he only, he's only been married once, right? Uh, engaged. I, I believe he's been uh, married once and engaged three times, but I could be wrong. Uh, twice famously to yeah. Jennifer Lopez, his bride. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went to her concert, held up a sign, said, I'm marry me. me. No. Oh. You've seen the movie oh, Marry yes, Me? Yeah. I thought you were going to make a joke about um, uh, Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. Uh, announced that they were having a baby because Courtney went to one of their shows and held up a sign and said, "I'm Travis, pregnant. I'm pregnant." Yeah, that's from Which, a music video. It's from a music video. Blink One Eight Two. Oh, yeah. There's uh, I forget what uh, music video it is. Someone's holding up a sign that says, "Travis, I'm pregnant." Oh, okay. Ellen, Ellen was telling me about this story, and I was like, "That doesn't that doesn't make any sense." Uh, like he didn't know that she was pregnant, and that's how you chose to announce it. Like. Now it makes a little bit more sense. I think, yeah, I thought it was all the small things, but it... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, let's see. Announcement references, Blink-22 music video. Which one was it? I think it was all the small things. There you go. It's all the small things. Okay. What a blink head I am. <laughs> um, well, then that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. I hope that, that that wasn't actually like the way that she announced it. I what? hope there was like a private personal conversation that preceded that. I don't hate it. I'll, I'll tell you what. Somebody told me recently that they got engaged uh, without having discussed it beforehand. And I loved that. And I thought it was so romantic. Just raw dogged the... Uh, raw dogged the, the engagement. engagement. I think that's fine. Just said, hey, uh, will you marry me? The big, the biggest thing there is like, what do you do about the ring? Yeah. Oh, of like them picking it out? Yeah. yeah or like did... I mean, you have to have like a conversation about what they want for a ring before you pop the question. But you... I mean, you... Don't you don't have you don't to. have to right? But like that's a real big gamble unless you arrange the ring thing after the proposal. Yeah, you could just say, "Hey, you want to marry me?" And then like then you go. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, but th- but then does that qualify as you truly uh, proposing, or does that fall into the having the discussion about getting engaged? Well, I mean, if there's a "Will you marry me?" and a "Yes," I think you've just gotten engaged. Hmm. If you can you go on a knee without a ring? I don't know. I th- I would think so, right? Yes, I think so. You I can th- have a placeholder ring, maybe. Yeah, and I think that a lot of uh, uh, famously in Knocked Up, the ring pop. He, uh, I no, I think he just goes uh, empty box. Oh, okay. Says uh, uh, you deserve to, for this box to be filled with something beautiful, and I want to be the man you want me to be. Blah blah. That was sort of like a forced proposal, though. Uh, I mean, full may contain spoilers. At this point, uh, she was pregnant with uh, their child. Right. That's what I'm saying. A forced proposal. Uh, it wasn't. I, I think just as circumstances happened to be, uh, they were expecting a, a child together. So I mean, they got close to each other as a result of that. I don't yeah, think and she held up forced. a sign at a Blink-182 show and said, Travis, I'm pregnant. Yes. Uh, David Fincher. <laughs> so you still haven't... Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's not too different from the Travis I'm pregnant thing that made David Fincher say, Affleck's my guy. Uh, I don't know. How he based it or he made the decision based off of watching Ben Affleck on red carpets because he knew such a big 
like the look and like the shot of this movie like the disheveled like him him standing in front of the poster him in front of the poster with like this uneasy like shit is this guy like who is this guy kind of smile and there's a great quote he uh said i flipped through google images and found about 50 shots of affleck giving that kind of smile in public situations you look at them and you know he's trying to make other people comfortable in the moment but by doing that he's making himself vulnerable to people having other perceptions about Ah, him that's a good way to approach that i'll give it to you he kind of nailed it though Uh, yeah you know he's trying to make people comfortable in the moment i think that that's that that checks out that's like yeah and affleck is trying to make people comfortable in the moment he's like this is and what like I'm supposed the, to be that doing. That is the iconic shot of that movie and like in the trailer and everything the too. Crooked. Just, yeah, just standing in front of the poster, like doing the weird smile, yeah. like clearly uncomfortable. And it's like, should he be smiling? Right. Would I be smiling if I were in that situation? Would I be smiling if I did it? If I didn't do it? All these questions people ask themselves. But it could have been John Hamm. <laughs> he, he, he took to watch what happens live to uh, drop the, the bomb. That's right. And if you want to drop the bomb on the internet, you're going to need a Squarespace website. (laughs) Boy, (laughs) I nailed that. Uh, Squarespace is a phenomenal platform for anybody that wants to make their own personal website or a website for for their brand. Um, it's a uh, it's a all-in-one platform for building a brand or a personal business. Uh, you can stand out with a beautiful website. You can engage with your audience and uh, sell anything, your products, your content. Or even your time. We've uh, we've used some Squarespace. Mm. We've toyed around with it because, oh, yeah. as mentioned uh, on previous episodes of this podcast, we're working on something. The boys are in the kitchen cooking up some stuff. And uh, we've been playing around with Squarespace. It's super easy to use. You drag and drop some elements. You pick some fonts. You pick some color schemes. And they make it about as easy as you could ever want. And they've got a bunch of product features, such as member areas, where you can, uh, you know, for creators, you can monetize your content and expertise. You've got appointment scheduling if you need to fill up some booking. You've got a video studio if that's your kind of deal. Email campaigns to get in touch. Social media accounts, connectivity, uh, analytics to to see what people are, are what are what they're buying, what they're selling, what they're engaging with, what they're not engaging with. So all that stuff helps you get you to where you need to go. Uh, Go to squarespace.com slash brunch for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code brunch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash brunch. And then use promo code brunch for 10% off your website or domain. Do you smell, you smell cake and candles? No. You might soon because someone's got a birthday coming up. Pete is, uh, Hitting the uh, big, uh, still in his thirties. Yeah, are well, you? Your birthday was like. Uh, I think we. I think we were able to just totally skip my birthday this year, which I'm just. Uh, did wait. Oh, no, no, you remembered my birthday. I did. I think you did. I asked when your birthday was. Yeah, but I think I missed your birthday. I don't think you did. When was your birthday? Uh, this year. Let me. I think I missed your birthday. No way, you didn't. I. I I wouldn't have given you shit for it. Famously, last year, I uh, missed your birthday. Yeah. I had a lot on my plate at the time and just I, straight I, up missed I it. I think I actually did miss your birthday. When's your birthday? Like the day? Uh, this is personal Is your birthday today? No. <laughs> my what? birthday was almost two weeks ago, so it'll be tough to find. Unless you can search texts by day. Dude, I missed it. I, I said... Uh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. There's no way you did. I, Dude, I missed your birthday. I texted you, uh, and I said, yo, did I miss your birthday? And you were like, no, nah, it's in like two weeks or whatever. And I said, okay, phew. Uh, I, I said, there are too many June birthdays. And you said, I was hoping you would miss my birthday so we would be even. Yeah. And I, that was my birthday gift to you, is that I missed your birthday, and now we're even. I don't think you did. You definitely said happy birthday. I don't think you didn't I did, do did. like an Instagram post or something like that. Not yeah. that I expect one or definitely not that I want one. 
but I don't think you did. It was a kind of uh, we don't need to get into numbers. It was a uh, it was a type of birthday that I fear and don't like. There's some people. Oh, dude, no, I, you, I said there are too many June birthdays. You said this week, and I said vague, nice, and you said Wednesday. I wish I let you miss it so we'd be even. Yeah, and then you got and me Wednesday. I don't think I did. I, I think you did, or maybe we saw each other, then. Oh, well, that could it could have been we. I think we saw each other, but I didn't say happy birthday. I'm pretty sure if you forgot my birthday, I would have used it to my advantage you, you didn't and i didn't say happy birthday i literally searched birthday in my text messages did i forget my birthday you may have Maybe. forgot your birthday no i i don't know no i, I i'm i'm 99 sure that i missed your birthday i mean we'll have to root through some stuff but i don't think i don't think so i don't know who cares anyway you've got a uh do, do, do you care about uh, acknowledging ages? No, I don't give a shit. Uh, are, are you entering, I think, if I have the right year for you, are you entering your uh, mid-30s or early to mid-30s? Early to mid-30s, because I'm 32. You'll be 32? Yeah. So 32, 32, I believe, one of my least favorite years. Hated it. Cool. Awesome. That was well, one. I mean, to be fair, uh, it can't really be worse than 30 and 31 for me. Yeah, true. <laughs> and that's, that'll just show that everybody's uh, different. I think 30, I think the pandemic colored in a lot of uh, my 32. And there were just like a lot, of, I had a lot of weird things going on at 32. And I remember I never do this, though, like, I'm not a big. Like, oh, will this year end? We always discuss, though, like, oh, man, twenty. when will 2020 end? It's like, you're not upset about 2020. You're upset about now yeah, and right. life. And, like, now ain't changing once it's not. But I do remember being like, yo, 32 sucks. And by the time I turned 33, I was, like, legitimately happy to be older and and just a new chapter. It. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I that's how I felt about 30 for sure. 31 has been better, but still not amazing. And uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with the years or the age. It's just it's stuff's now. not going the way that I want it to. Yeah. So hopefully that'll change at 32. But it's it's like the, you know, it's like you said, like when the new year hits and everybody's like, thank God 2020 <laughs> is over. It's bad news. <laughs> motherfucker, it, it's today and yesterday was yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I turned 35, which okay. that is, there's no arguing that is mid thirties. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I'm always really cool about turning ages with a round number, like, or well, I guess just, just a cleaner, 20, man. 30, whatever. Uh, I hated turning 25 and I did have, I understood that it was silly, but I, but I did have some like deep uh buried down anxiety about turning 35 and then as soon as you turn those ages you're like it's, it's the same. just the same i actually loved age 25 i was scared of turning the 25 number 25 yeah but well, yeah, once but i turned it i was like who cares we're all gonna die 24 there's a case of being early 20s same yeah. with like 34 it's you, you like you said you're clearly smack dab in the middle yeah you're mid 20s mid 30s like it changes the the mindset attached yeah. to the number. I also though, I benefit from, I've uh, since really my early twenties, mostly because of work. I've had uh, a lot. I've had more older friends than you've had. So I stopped doing the oh man, like this age is so old or that person. So like I was, I stopped doing that by the time I was 25, mm -hmm. but I remember I used to have to get on you because you'd be like, man, you think things are going to be so that much person's different. like this age shit. And I'm like, I'll be there in five minutes yeah. and then you'll be there in 10. My dude, you think that things are going to be so much different. Like, and you just realize that like, you don't feel that much more different. Like, at like 35 or whatever. Like I had a I had a bachelor party last weekend and I went to bed on Saturday night at like 11 p.m. while a bunch of like half the bachelor party went out to the casino and I was like, "Huh. Like 
I did that, and that's old person behavior, but I don't feel like an old person. I don't feel like a different person. It's just like sometimes shit changes and like your priorities. Like I cared more about Sunday than that Saturday night. Right. That doesn't like it's not like an inherent change in like your your makeup or, or like who you are as a person. You still feel kind of young. You just kind of prioritize things a little bit differently. And if you're lucky there, you'll get in some stretches where you listen to your body a little bit. And I'm yeah, sure that right. you were doing it then. And when you're younger, you never really have to listen to your body. But may I... Uh, I still have a youthful spirit in a lot of ways. I said the other day, uh, if I take care of myself, there's no reason that I can't be in the same shape that I'm in right now, which is mid-30s, not taking great care of myself. But if I take care of myself a little better than I do now, I think that I should be just as athletic at 65 as I am right now, which speaks to me not taking great care of myself in my 30s. But like, I think it's just unvo- unavoidable shit with that where like your body just doesn't cooperate. Yeah, know? but like my, my brain hasn't cooperated. Like that's where I, so if on an athletic scale, I'm probably relative to what I could be. So if I say 10, that doesn't mean that I'm Usain Bolt. I mean, like that would be like peak DJ Bean athleticism. I would say that athletically right now, I'm like a five out of 10. Okay. Uh, four out of 10. <laughs> I think that it's reasonable that it's 65. Maybe at 40, I get up to six and stay there for a while. And then when I'm 65, who's to say I can't be a four out of 10 athletically for me? I mean, yeah, I, I think about that stuff a lot. Like, it's projecting I'll, though. It's it's it, it's you saying don't know that I'm what going your to life do is going to look that, like. Yeah, or that I will be 65. <laughs> Correct, but like you know, assuming that you're alive, like and like if you have kids, mm-hmm. like are you going to have energy to expend athletically outside of the ho- outside of the home? Hey, if I can be real, this is what the conversation was. It was a conversation about uh, folks my age and a few years older getting into the kids game and. Somebody was just saying that they questioned that part of it of like, will I be able to do this with my kid? Will I be able to do that with my kid? And I was pushing back on. I was like, don't let that be the reason that you yeah, uh, because like wouldn't that, do it. I mean, like that's that's a huge motivator for people of like of that age, like 60 or whatever. Like, oh, I got to stay in shape so that I can do stuff with my kids. Yeah. And like I know there was a, there was a, a tweet that went around. I want to say like a month and a half ago. Um, of like this guy who was like severely overweight and he was like very unhealthy and he was like 400, 450 pounds or something like that. And he had a young daughter and he like, he like was no longer able to like do shit or keep up with his daughter and it like broke his heart. And he was like, I've got to, I've got to do something about my weight so that I can like participate in my daughter's life and be physical and do these activities with her. And like he started working out and doing like fun activities with his daughter, not only so that he could lose the weight, but he could also do other stuff with her. And like that is very cool. I have heard uh, of that where um, people like as soon as they have a kid, even though you don't have time to do anything and everything's so hectic and everything, where people will get into this like crazy survival mode. You want to make sure you're alive for your kid. (laughs) Eating like everything. Right. Like one of my friends specifically was on this insane running kick and it was a thousand percent like uh fell in line with he had his first kid yeah like you (laughs) want to make sure that you don't die and leave your kid to fend for themselves or like leave your your partner to take care and and shoulder all of that weight so ham Ended up doing like four more seasons of <laughs> Mad Men, I want to say. Actually, no, that probably would have been late in the game for it. Uh, we're going to celebrate uh, Pete's birthday by going to a rock concert. We're going to see uh, Dead & Co's, Dead & Company's final, uh, would that be, is it their, yeah, final Fenway Park show because they're playing one Saturday. At least we're going to go Sunday. At least with John Mayer and Dead and Co. I like, think that Mayer's Dead, leaving. I think that Dead and Company will always. I think that Dead and Company is uh, the John Mayer offshoot. So I'm sure Bobby Weir Correct, is going to keep right. touring and everything. There so will probably be dead. a different. Yeah. Uh, 
there'll be there'll be a new iteration it'll be like the the dead boys or something yeah. and they'll have somebody else but uh well, my only real like draw to them like i have i have fun but like I, i'm there for john mayer yeah i like though that uh dylan has gone to see them now do you know this no uh will has brought dylan and uh dylan just uh stands bobby weir He'll just be like, yo, we saw Dead and Cole last night, Bobby shredding. <laughs> <laughs> when really Bobby's just like up there, like kind of strumming and grunting. He's vibing. Yeah. I love it. Uh, we've, uh, this has been the first time in a while, I think, that we've thought about uh, fits and what we're wearing. I know that, uh, so the crew, it's a very, very solid crew. It's uh, Pete Blackburn, DJ Bean, Jeff Israel, and Ryan Lambert. I've seen Dead and Company with, RL, this will be number three for me, number two for you. Yep. Jeff has never seen Dead and Company before, but he's a big fish guy. So, oh shit, that's right. He didn't come with us that first time. Right. I don't know why he didn't, but Damn. Uh, we have, uh, I'll be honest, we, if devotees of the podcast will know, we got the tickets for this show while podcasting one time. Mm -hmm. And there were some real issues with checkout. We have some pretty modest seats, which I like. I, there are two shows, and I'm devastated that we uh, we ended up with the 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 birthday tickets. And I think that we chose them purposely because it was a birthday thing. But and it was the only show uh, at oh, that point. Maybe okay, that's why it was. Uh, I have a 7 a.m. flight the morning after the show, so uh, I, I'm a, I'm a little uh, I'm a little on edge about that. But we'll figure it out, and my outfit is gonna slap. I've got uh, I got. Uh, friend of the podcast, Dylan, aka from the freezer, uh, not not washed Dylan, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, from the freezer, it's cooking up some way. stuff. Yep, he's. Uh, I'll be wearing a shirt that I've been wanting to debut for a long time. Jeff is going to be wearing some from the freezer apparel. I don't know what RL will be doing, but he's always just got a good look. About I could see RL doing something involving jean shorts, maybe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some like tight but not too tight rolled jean shorts. That's a sort of thing that he could do. That works very tasteful at uh, a dead show. Uh, are you going to be doing any sort of headband or anything? Uh, I think I might do bucket hat. Uh, I've was... been into the bucket hat look lately. I, I smoked two of those at a, at the bachelor party and got good, good receptions. Have you are we famously both have the same tie dyed? bucket hat is that the one that you're gonna wear uh that one i'm considering i don't have to but it's it's on the table why were you making that part of yours no okay good so I it's think, on the table for me i think uh the, the the short hair is too young so i've been doing very few hats of late just mm -hmm. kind of uh showing off the new look letting the uh texturizing dust speak for itself <laughs> and uh do all that i have a haircut in like tw uh, an hour and i think i'm gonna go a little bit shorter than it is now so go wow. fuck yourself yeah pal. <laughs> that'd be so funny we just get increasingly short <laughs> yeah. both look uh horrible i don't mind that yeah no get short do do this or shorter and uh we'll just be matchy matchy boys it's gonna be a good time though uh we're going to do some uh light cooking out correct yeah i believe that's dual plan, yeah. uh pre-party uh I was texting with jeff told him it's gonna be a very bad day to be any of the following a hot dog mm -hmm. a soda a hamburger mm -hmm. a heineken zero mm, you're doing heineken zero i might do uh, some soda a heineken zero or a spin drift maybe okay. uh dare i say uh, a joint of pot also because when in when in grateful dead mode you know what we can play uh, we could do uh, like um, how you say speakers, just play a bunch of Grateful Dead music, talk, <laughs> grill, do some Heineken zeros. Mm -hmm. I uh, I got very high at the bachelor party this weekend, and I ate an entire like family sized bag of Funyuns. And ah, what, what do you what do you mean? I mean, like, I it, love Funyuns, it is disgusting, but that right, but... just I'm just thinking like salt. I know I had a, I was in a bad way on uh, Monday, famously. I ate so many of them that like my my lips got like like kind of like puckered because of all the salt, and then like it split my lip. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was it was it was the best decision I've ever made. But I'll tell you what I was enjoying in the moment what? those Funyuns. <laughs> uh, I uh, recently made a uh, medication adjustment that uh, 
has been accompanied with uh, some making me into a real carb vacuum, which is just never fun because it just sucks, feel bad, no good. Uh, yesterday, I was like, I, I got what did I got? Uh, I ate Chex Mix, and also I don't know why. I in my adulthood, it's so weird. I've really gotten into uh, <laughs> Golden Grams. <laughs> okay, Golden Grams are great, but like they're they amazing. Yeah, they're great. There is not one bit of nutritional value to them. No, the chocolate and I particularly I do the uh, chocolate ones. Okay. Oh, delicious man. though so good they're like chocolate glazed they've got like yeah that right. they've light got glaze like, to they, it you know man yeah. they've got like the little like coat of yeah i don't know what something the fuck on that there. is but it's so good but oh boy but i i let's see i got up did i even have breakfast <laughs> i was i do i was thinking i was like dj you I have no nothing fucking real in you right now you man. feel better about yourself guess what i had today what Two Krispy Kreme donuts this morning, and then chicken nuggets for lunch. <laughs> At least you had some rib meat, man. Because you had a little bit of protein. It's maybe rib meat. Maybe. Mm. So, yeah. John Hamm. So, he uh, ended up doing Baby Driver. Mm. I don't think Affleck... Affleck could have done that role. I think... Wouldn't have looked as cool, but he could have done it. Yeah. But famously, Hamm's character in Baby Driver just, like, lingered. A little, remember he kept coming back, yeah. kept coming back, uh, and he had that horrible line of like, "What? You never been a wheel man?" I didn't like that line. I know that everybody hates that movie because of Kevin Spacey. Nobody hates that. It was movie. before. Oh, I know people who hate that movie, and I love. I that mean, movie. that movie should be canceled as Ansel Elgort and Kevin Spacey in like the two leading roles, right? But but it's a good movie. It, it, as far as the work that's done in that movie, I, I love that movie. It's a good movie. I also like the song uh, Baby Driver by Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, quickly, uh, you want to hit, uh, you saw Arrival, finally. Yeah. I said I wasn't crazy about it. You said, what you? What were your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I I really liked the concept of it, and it, it, was, it held my attention the entire time, but, like, it wasn't the best. And, like, the, for especially for a, oh, boy, uh, especially for a Denny Villeneuve movie, mm. like, lower rung but like the concept of it is so cool and i've been thinking about the concept of it for like weeks at this point and give people i just i just wish it was a better movie give people the concept i uh i saw it when i was cramming for the oscars one year and because it was not on the same level as the other movies i was watching at the time i was like fuck this movie yeah no it's not bad i will give you the concept next week because we're running out of time here so next week be sure to tune in when i give you uh the the summary and the concept of arrival which came out like five years ago patreon.com slash listen to brunch you're not going to want to miss this